okay, what do you think this is? Dude, what does it look like? How about a hollow ball of cells? <laughs> hmm, that's what it is. This is a picture of a blastula, and if you remember, the blastula was that thing that defines all animals. I'm going to try to make one animal cladogram and include everybody that I want you to know on it, but we're going to build it out in four little clips here. So the blastula defines everybody that we're going to look at next. And let's go ahead and scroll down here and try to draw this out in a way that is um, sort of hopefully um, helpful. So we know that the sister, uh, the sister protist to all animals is the coanoflagellate. Coan, and I didn't ever figure out if it's two n's or one n. We'll do one n here, and we did two on the last one. Flagellate. Awesome. And I'm going to show you a picture of a coanoflagellate in just a second, but first of all, I want to show you that, yes, blastula comes next. That's the character that defines all the critters beyond this point. That's the character that defines this ancestor that gave rise to all the critters beyond this point. The first and most primitive animal actually has a lot in common with coenoflagellates, and that is the sponge sponges, and sponges are also known as periphera. That's their um, family. That's not their family. It's their phylum, which is just a classification level. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some, some sponges, I think. But maybe I'm going to show you a coanoflagellate first. Look at how cool that thing is. That's my single-celled protist, coanoflagellate. I'm going to show you why sponges are, um, they think coanoflagellates gave rise to sponges and all other animals. This is a sponge. It's a filter feeding um, organism in the ocean. They are pretty unorganized. There's not a whole lot of structure to them. There's a lot of, you can actually see a whole bunch of holes in this particular sponge and they just filter the water and eat the food out of it. And here's how they filter the water. They use these collar cells, which are also called coanocytes. Coincidence? I think not. Doesn't the coanocyte or the collar cell look exactly like a coanoflagellate? The hypothesis is that a group of coanoflagellates were like, dude, we might as well start hanging out. Like, if we join forces, we actually will be more likely to reproduce and pass on our genes and get more food so that we can reproduce and pass on our genes. So it was a successful strategy that um, gave rise to this whole group of organisms. Now, sponges um, are pretty primitive. The next level up is a group of organisms that um, have, everybody beyond this has tissues. Now, that is not Kleenex, my friends. No, no, no. The most primitive animal with a blastula that also has tissues is a group of, uh, the common thing you can think of them as is jellyfish, but it includes other critters, and they're cnidarians. And they're cnidarians because they have this, like, phenomenal, amazing structure called a nidocyte, which I'll tell you about in a second. Jellyfish also include uh, sea anemones, or the cnidarians also include sea anemones, and sea anemones are stingy type things, but all of these guys have tissues. So let's check it out. The, I mean, oh, how cool is that? Just don't go hang out with it. Check this out. These nidocytes are cellular organelles that are basically poisoned arrows there's poison on the tip of these arrows. Check that out. 
that have strings attached to them, and the jellyfish or sea anemone or coral will shoot this poison arrow at their prey. And since it's attached to a string, they will paralyze their prey and then wind in that string and, like, reel in their prey and eat it. If you've ever been to a tide pool and you stuck your finger nicely and gently and kindly, not your tongue, into a sea anemone, you'll notice that you kind of stick to it. Have you done that before? You stick to it because the sea anemone is like, yeah, I'll eat that, and sticks all of its poison barbs into your finger. And then you are a little bit stronger than a sea anemone probably, and so you pull your finger away and all those little threads break. So the sea anemone was not successful at eating you, but it tried to. I say don't stick your tongue in it. Who would stick their tongues in a sea anemone? But it has happened. And you can imagine that your tongue is less um, tough. Like this, the skin is thinner. Like the tissue on your tongue is like, yeah, don't stick your tongue in something that is going to poison you because, of course, it was a Y chromosome who stuck his tongue into a sea anemone and then, like, had a allergic reaction to it, and his tongue swelled up because it was poison in there, and he had to go to the emergency room, and I was not present for that, but um, it was a story that stuck in my brain. I go, what? That's crazy. This is a sea anemone, so don't stick your tongue in that thing. I think that's all I have for this section. I totally it is. Okay, so we're at cladogram land. There's something, something new is going to happen here, right? Like something different is going to happen that's going to define the next group of organisms. Don't you want to know what it is? What is that word? Yeah, I'll tell you in a second. <laughs>